I'm just so excited for this video. <laughs> Hello everybody, Nikki Mara here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you've had a fabulous week full of magic and are ready for another fun ranking video. And by the title of today's video, you know that we are ranking some of my favorite Disney heroines. Now it is quite obvious that Disney has many beloved female characters in their movies, 13 of which make up one of the most popular brands in the entire world, the official Disney princess lineup and a completely other franchise made up of two Frozen Queens, who between you and me have made probably the same if not more money than the 13 other princesses. <laughs> and while I have already ranked all of the official Disney princesses, and I'll leave a link to the video right up here, today's video is going to consist of Disney heroines who do not quite meet the criteria to fit the official princess lineup. Now this list is also going to contain some characters who have previously been featured in the princess lineup, however they were removed for one reason or another. This list will also contain female characters that I believe should be included in the Disney princess lineup. Granted, it is safe to say I have a lot of thoughts about these incredible female characters, and we're going to get into all of my thoughts on them. If you are excited for today's video, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Now, because these princesses aren't necessarily as popular as the princess characters, there are some different points that I want to hit with them, as opposed to the points that we did over in the princess ranking. The five points that we are going to be talking about for each of these characters are, first and foremost, the purpose they serve in their movie. Are they a main character? Are they a secondary character? Do they make a big impact? Do they sort of sit in the background? What energy do they bring to their movie and how do they establish their presence? The second point we're going to touch on is their character design. The third one is the voice acting. The fourth is their song if they so happen to have a song. And the fifth point I'm going to touch on is what prevented them from making it into the official Disney princess lineup. Because let me tell you, some of these ladies, they really have strong contending points, but for some reason or other, they were overlooked or removed. Moved. So we are going to get into all of that and more coming up very soon. But first and foremost, as always, we are going to go through some disclaimers and conditions. But if you all would like to jump right into the ranking, then you can head right to this timestamp. As for the disclaimers, first and foremost, I am not associated with the Walt Disney Company and therefore I do not speak for the brand or the company. This video is all just my opinion and contains all of my own thoughts. And none of those reflect those of the company. And secondly, I heavily celebrate having different opinions from everybody out there, so please feel free to let me know what you think of these incredible characters down below. If one of your favorite characters makes it low on my list, then make sure to tell me why you gravitate towards her so much. I love getting to connect with all of you down in the comments and getting to share our love for Disney and all of these amazing characters. So make sure to leave me a comment down below so I can read all of your thoughts. Next, we are moving on to our conditions. There are certain conditions that these ladies must fit in order to reach today's list. The first condition is that they must be a female character created by the Walt Disney Company. Now, when I say created by the Walt Disney Company, that does exclude characters made by other studios that were later acquired by Disney. For example, Lucasfilm, so I won't be including Princess Leia, Padme, and also 20th Century Fox, so characters like Anastasia won't be included. And the other really popular one that I know people have asked me about my opinion on is Thumbelina, and she will not be on today's list. But if you guys would like an acquired Disney heroine list, make sure to let me know down below so that way I can talk about all of the characters you guys want me to touch on. And the second condition for today's list is that they cannot be an official member of the Disney Princess lineup currently. This list will include previous members of the Disney Princess lineup, and also some Disney princesses who are not official members of the Disney Princess lineup. But no big name princesses that everybody knows and loves and can be seen all in the parks. This one's going to be reserved for the unsung heroes. <laughs> and because there are so many incredible Disney heroines out there, I am going to limit today's list just to my top 15. So with all of those disclaimers and conditions out of the way, I think we are ready to start ranking some Disney heroines. Make sure to grab yourself a snack and a drink, sit back, relax, and let's have some fun. We are starting off at the bottom of my list today at number 15 is Kida from Atlantis The Lost Empire. Now, if you guys have seen my ranking every single Disney animated movie video, then you will know that I am not a fan of the movie Atlantis. However, I do love the character of Empress Kida quite a bit. In my opinion, she's probably one of the best things about her movie. And what I love so much about her is that we are so used to seeing princesses and heroines usually drawn to emulate young women under the age of like 30. But Kida is thousands of years old. I think that is just such a fun detail to her that makes her stand out from everybody else. Like, well, yes, she does look like she could fit in with a lot of the other Disney heroines. In actuality, she's so much older and has so much more experience than every single other one. And I think that's what really established 
distinguishes her from everybody else. As for the purpose in her movie, she is secondary only to Milo. She starts out as a princess, and then later when her father passes, she becomes the empress. And I don't know about you, but being the empress of Atlantis, I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> As for her character design, I think what makes Kita stand out is her long, beautiful white hair. There are really very few other Disney characters that have white hair. And so having her have this youthful hairstyle, but with very long white locks, it establishes her as different from almost every other character. As for the voice acting, Kita was acted by Cree Summer, and I absolutely love this vocal performance. She absolutely did a wonderful job with this character. Kita, of course, does not have a song in her movie, as her movie is not a musical, and the reason that she is not included in the official Disney princess lineup is that her film was technically considered a box office flop. Usually when a movie by the Disney company doesn't perform as well, the characters in it aren't necessarily considered front runners for park appearances and merchandise. And because Atlantis didn't really perform well, Kida was not included in the official princess lineup. And while I do believe that she is deserving of the title of Disney princess, there are a lot of other characters on this list that I think deserve it a little bit more, but I definitely think Kida could hold her own in this group of powerful women. And with that, we move on to number 14 on my list, who is Princess Ailanwi from The Black Cauldron. Now, Princess Ailanwi is a Disney princess that almost everybody forgets about because in her movie, her role as a princess is sort of non-existent. While in the books that the Black Cauldron was based off of, she is a ruling princess, the Disney animated production had to sort of chop down the books and decide what was most important to go into this film. And a lot of Ailan Wee's ruling did not make the final cut. And so we really just see her acting as a normal girl throughout the story, which isn't a bad thing at all, but she comes with the title of princess. Now, I really, really like Princess Ailan Wee. I think she has such a fun, spunky personality that, again, is unlike any other Disney character. Character. For her role in the movie, she begins as a captured damsel in distress in the Horned King's castle, but ends up becoming a really strong part of the group made up of her, Tarn, and Fluter Flam, who all end up coming together to defeat the Horned King. She is feisty. She can hold her own in an argument, and she's not afraid to call Tarin out when he's being unfair. She has so many great qualities, but in my opinion, she really doesn't have enough screen time to where she would be able to hold her own as a very, very strong female character. She does, however, hold her own in the group. As for her character design, she does bear a little bit of resemblance to Princess Aurora when Princess Aurora is in the forest look. She has longer blonde hair with a little headband and a really pretty dress, but overall nothing super elegant to the point that you would look at her and think, oh, that's definitely a princess. And part of this reason could also be that she's on the younger side. She was modeled to be around 12 years old which is even younger than the youngest official Disney princess, which is Snow White, who's modeled to be around 14. As for the voice acting, Princess Ailanwi was voice acted by Susan Sheridan, and I really love the vocal performance here. Princess Ailanwi does not sing in her movie as her movie is not a musical. And what prevented her from making it into the official princess lineup? Well, once again, her movie was a box office flop. The Black Cauldron severely underperformed when Disney needed it to do really well, and therefore a lot of the characters and a lot of the plot points were sent to the back burner and not publicized as much. I've said this so many times, but it's so true that this movie is Disney's Black Sheep, where it has a really big cult following and certain people absolutely love it, me being one of them, but it's often gone by the wayside because it wasn't as popular when it came out. And that's number 14 on my list. So with that, we're gonna move on to number 13, who is Vanellope Von Schweetz from Wreck-It Ralph and Ralph Breaks the Internet. Now, Vanellope is a very interesting character. For the purpose in her movie, she serves quite a big purpose. She starts off as just a seemingly scrappy kid who is villainized by everyone in her game because she's considered a glitch. When, spoiler alert, in actuality, she was actually the princess of her game, but her coding was destroyed, so that way Turbo, aka King Candy, could take over. But at the end of her movie, when it is revealed that she's actually a princess, she sort of rescinds that title and prefers to take on the role of president. Overall, she's just absolutely adorable, so funny, and has wonderful banter. 
with Wreck-It Ralph. As for her character design, she has her main Sugar Rush Racer outfit, which I think is really, really cute. I think the teal looks super great on her, and I love the candy elements that were added to her hair. And she also briefly has a princess uniform, which she never wears again after, like, being in it for 10 seconds. <laughs> Vanellope was voiced by the wonderful Sarah Silverman, who has such a fun, raspy, yet energetic voice behind the character, and I think it suits her just perfectly. Vanellope sings very briefly in the sequel to Wreck-It Ralph, which is Ralph Breaks the Internet, but there isn't necessarily a soundtrack-based song for her. Ah, uh, to sing about a steering wheel. <laughs> And what prevented her from being in the official princess lineup? Well, this might just be my opinion, but I really don't believe that Vanellope fits what is considered to be the stereotypical Disney princess character arc. In Ralph Breaks the Internet, she actually meets up in a room with all of the official Disney princesses and Frozen Queens and sort of gets to talk to them and banter with them. And it's very clear that while she can relate to them on some levels, she is just very, very different from the way that the princess lineup officially operates. And so she was a character that was honorarily able to meet with all of the princesses and actually have a scene with all of them, but is not considered an official member. But I really like Vanellope and I really enjoy getting to see her in a lot of the parades at Disney. Moving on to number 12 on my list is Elena of Avalor from the TV series, Elena of Avalor. Now, I'm gonna be completely upfront and honest. I have not seen the entirety of Elena of Avalor. And while I have seen some of them and even met Elena in the parks, I do not know her entire story. But from what I do know about her, it lands her number 12 on my list. Now as for the purpose in her movie, well, TV series. <laughs> Elena is the ruler of Avalor. She is the one that most of the episodes follow. And being a Disney Junior show, Elena often meets certain plot points that help her learn really valuable lessons or teach valuable lessons to others. As for her character design, Elena has a beautiful red dress that has her long brown hair sort of swept to the side in a ponytail. I think this outfit is regal and stunning and beautiful. And I love her beautiful scepter that she carries as well. Elena is voiced by Amy Carrero for all 78 episodes that she appears in. The series Elena of Avalor does feature quite a few songs, some of which Elena does sing, including the theme song Elena of Avalor, Happy to be Alive, and Give it a Whirl, amongst others I'm absolutely sure. And what prevented Elena from being an official member of the Disney Princess lineup? Well, this one's actually quite interesting. Elena is able to be met in the Princess Fairy Tale Hall at the Magic Kingdom alongside Cinderella, Rapunzel, and Tiana. However, I believe that she is not an official member of the Princess lineup because her debut appearance was not in an official animated theatrical release. Because she comes from a series, she sort of requires a lot of time to sit down and watch the entire series to understand the story. It's not one where you can put on a single movie, sit down, and know the entire story in an hour and a half. And so it might be a little bit more difficult for the general public to sit down and actually know who Elena is and her entire storyline, as opposed to a princess who debuted in an hour and a half animated movie. But even though I haven't seen the entirety of her series, I think she's absolutely deserving, considering she's already meeting and greeting in a room with arguably one of the most famous Disney princesses. I think that makes her pretty cool. And with that, we move on to number 11 on my list, who is Jane Porter from Tarzan. Now, Jane is an interesting one to talk about. For the purpose in her movie, she serves as the secondary lead to Tarzan, and she comes into this story as a font of knowledge, yet when it comes to Tarzan's world, he's the one that's actually teaching her quite a bit about all of the gorillas. She is a wonderful character, and I really enjoy especially the end when she decides to stay back with Tarzan. I think that moment where she leaps from the boat is always is just so precious and sweet. Now, as for her character design, this one is an interesting one to talk about because Jane has brown hair with a yellow dress. Now, what other character do we know of that has brown hair and a yellow dress? Oh, of course, Belle from Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> now, if you didn't know, Jane Porter actually used to be an official member of the Disney Princess lineup. However, her membership was very short-lived because her movie didn't necessarily perform as well as all the others, and she was often getting confused for Belle in the lineup. When you place them side by side, they do have quite a bit of similarities. And so it was later decided to remove Jane Porter from the official princess lineup. Also considering that she's not really a princess either by birth or by marriage. I guess you could say Tarzan was like Prince of the Jungle, 
maybe, but that's sort of a stretch. As for her voice, Jane Porter was wonderfully voice acted by Minnie Driver. She does not have a song in the original Tarzan movie, however, she does sing in the Broadway musical. And again, what prevented her from being in the lineup? She absolutely was an official member of the princess lineup. However, confusion with other princesses in the lineup is what eventually got her removed. So do I think she should have her membership restored? I do. I really like Jane as a character. I know she's not as popular as a lot of the other female characters, but I really, really love watching her I get to experience the nature and really learn to love the gorillas the same way that Tarzan does. And I think her being a member of the lineup could also have a really strong impact on her presence in maybe the Animal Kingdom. Considering there's an entire gorilla trail, maybe we could have Jane Porter meet and talk about the gorillas with guests. I think that would be a really wonderful experience to add to the Disney parks, and I think she fits in quite well with the Animal Kingdom aesthetic. And with that, we move on to number 10 on my list. We've reached the top 10. At number 10 is Alice from Alice in Wonderland. Now this character gets quite a bit of backlash for being aloof in a world of her own, you could say, <laughs> and also not the most forward thinking. But I think it's important to remember that this is a child with a wild imagination who clearly is able to think up every single thing in Wonderland as Wonderland is literally her dream. As for the purpose in her movie, Alice is the protagonist of her movie and we follow her throughout her entire journey in Wonderland. We meet her in the real world, we follow her into her dream, and we escape her dream with her. Her journey almost becomes very personal with viewers because you are literally following her the entire way through. If I'm not wrong, there isn't really a scene without her besides the walrus and the carpenter, which is a dream sequence within a dream sequence. <laughs> now, as for her character design, Alice is wonderfully designed. I think her design is so simple yet so iconic. She has this beautiful, voluminous yellow hair with a blue dress and a white apron, and it keeps her design simple and perfect when the rest of Wonderland is so crazy and zany. Alice's character design really gives viewers something simple to look at when Wonderland is really overwhelming. As for the voice acting, Alice was wonderfully voice acted by actress Catherine Beaumont, who also voices another character that will show up on this list a little bit later. Leave it down in the comments if you know who you think it is. As for her song, Alice sings at a few different moments in her movie, such as at the very end of Golden Afternoon, and also the song that explains the trouble that I'm always in. I think this one is very beautiful considering it is, it's not the most vocally impressive performance, but my gosh, is it an emotional moment in the movie. Alice essentially sits down on a rock and just breaks down because she has had enough of Wonderland and she wants out. It's really special and it really makes viewers feel for her. And what prevented her from being in the official princess lineup? Well, again, she's not a princess either by birth or by marriage. And to be honest, she's relatively young. Alice is supposed to be a child, and I think the princess group is really considered to be teenagers and young adults. That's not to say that the official princess group couldn't expand their age range in the future, and if they do, maybe Alice would be included. I've also heard arguments made that she's princess of Wonderland, or princess of curiosity, or imagination. I don't really go for those, to be completely honest, but I can see where somebody would argue it. And with that, we move on to number nine on my list, who is Nala from The Lion King. Now, I love Nala as a character so much. While she may not have the most screen time in her movie, she makes such a strong presence and really does impact and alter the storyline in her movie. At the point when she's reunited with Simba, he really has no intention of going back to save the Pride Lands, but it's Nala who convinces him to go back and help everyone. And of course, that being the adult half of the purpose in her movie, the younger half of her, serves as a wonderful friend for Simba. Simba is usually either being guided by his father or being nagged at by Zazu, but he really doesn't have any friends considering he hasn't met Timon and Pumbaa yet, and so that's where Nala comes in and she really serves as a wonderful friend for him. As for her character design, she is a relatively simple lion, yet I think she is beautifully animated, both as a child and as an adult. Now, as for the voice acting, this might be one of the most interesting ones because Nala actually has four different voice actresses in her first original animated movie. She has separate voice actresses for both her speaking and singing voices 
for when she is both a child and an adult. For adult Nala, her speaking voice was given to us by Moira Kelly, and her singing voice was done by Sally Dworsky. And for young Nala, her speaking voice was done by Niketa Kalame, and young Nala's singing voice was given to us by Laura Williams. How fun that four incredible women came together to give life to this powerful lioness queen. As for her song, she sings alongside Simba in I Just Can't Wait to Be King as a child, and in her adult form, she sings with Simba, Can You Feel the Love Tonight? Of course, it's done in voiceover, but it's supposed to be her singing. And what prevented Nala from being an official member of the princess lineup? Well, she's not human. She is a lioness character, and unfortunately, it would be quite difficult for Disney to translate a lioness into their park presence to a level where you could do a meet and greet with her. <laughs> and so she remains off of the official princess lineup, but she is a queen of our hearts. And at number eight on my list is Giselle from Enchanted. Now, I think Giselle is such a fun and interesting character considering the majority of her time spent in the movie is as a live action princess. As for the purpose in her movie, Giselle is of course the protagonist of her movie, both in Andalasia, which is an animated world, and in the real world, which is live action. Now, as for the character design, Giselle was heavily based off of the actress who played her. The role of Giselle was of course performed by the incomparable Amy Adams in the original movie, and also in the sequel, Disenchanted. Giselle wears many incredible outfits in the movie, however, the animated design is really based off of Amy Adams' likeness. And that also pretty much takes care of the voice acting segment of this list. <laughs> Considering Amy Adams, of course, lent her voice to the animated Giselle, as well as performing her as the live action Giselle. As for the song, Giselle has quite a few songs in her movie, including Happy Little Working Song, I've Been Dreaming of a True Love's Kiss, and That's How You Know. And what prevented her from being an official Disney princess in the princess lineup? Well, the fact that Amy Adams is Giselle. If Disney wanted Giselle to have a huge presence in their parks, they would have had to pay heavy, heavy royalties to Amy Adams for her likeness. This includes all of the merch, any rides that she would be in, and not to mention that it's also very difficult to have a Giselle meet and greet considering Amy Adams would have to be at Disney every single day. <laughs> and while it was heavily considered for a long time that Giselle would join the lineup, the idea was eventually scrapped. But with that, we will move on to number seven on my list, who is Wendy Darling from Peter Pan. Now, I absolutely love Wendy Darling. I think she is such a strongly imaginative character. I think Wendy is particularly special because she believes so heavily in Peter Pan when so many others don't. I think a lot of Disney fans can really relate to her, especially because many of us truly hold these characters in our hearts as very real. And Wendy does the same thing with Peter Pan, and through her belief, she's able to meet him and really go on this wonderful adventure with him all the way to Neverland. For the purpose in her movie, she of course serves as the secondary lead to Peter Pan, and her and her younger brothers, Michael and John, are really the reason that the entire plot happens. The three children end up going to Neverland with Peter Pan and having wonderful adventures throughout their entire movie. For Wendy's character design, she is quite simple as she is just in a blue nightgown. She is getting ready for bed and has an unexpected adventure of a lifetime going all the way to Neverland with Peter Pan. Now for the voice acting. Wendy was wonderfully voice acted by Catherine Beaumont, who you might recognize as the name of Alice's voice actress. Did you guess it correctly down in the comments? <laughs> as for the song, Wendy really doesn't have a huge song in her movie, but she does sing Your Mother and Mine, which is, of course, a beautiful ballad at the very end of the movie, where the children are deciding that they really belong back at home with their mother and father. And what prevented her from being an official member of the princess lineup? Well, much like Alice, she is a young child, and the princess lineup just doesn't have that expansive of an age range as of right now. And of course, she's also not really a princess, either by birth or by marriage. So with that, we will move on to number six on my list, who is Maid Marian from Robin Hood. Now, I truly love Maid Marian so much. She is such a wonderful character with so much spirit and love and hope. For the purpose in her movie, she is the romantic interest of Robin Hood, and overall she just has such a lovely presence in her movie that you can't help but absolutely fall in love with the character. As for her character design, she is a female fox in Old English royalty attire. She was beautifully voice acted by Monica Evans. She really doesn't sing in her movie, although there is a beautiful song called Love that sort of happens as a voiceover, and it's unclear whether or not that's supposed to be Maid Marian's thoughts, or if the song just accompanies the beautiful sequence that's being animated. And what prevented her from being an official member of the princess lineup 
again, much like Nala, she's not human. And I'm gonna be completely honest, I wish Robin Hood was actually animated with human characters, so that way Maid Marian could have potentially become a Disney princess. She's such a wonderful character that I really think she deserves more attention in the Disney community. And with that, we have reached the top five of my list. I'm curious, take a second right now and see if you could possibly think about any five characters that could be the top five on my list and leave them down below in the comments. At number five on my list is Mirabel Madrigal from Encanto. Now, I love this character so much for her spirit. I think Mirabelle is an absolutely wonderful soul who can inspire so many incredibly young women to find what's truly special about themselves. As for the purpose in her movie, Mirabelle is the main character of Encanto. She is the only member in her family to not be given a special gift by the candle that saved her abuela. Mirabelle, however, goes on a journey and saves the miracle and her family, and establishes herself as just as special as the rest of her family. For her character design, I think Mirabelle has such a wonderful design, considering she's really the first female protagonist that's ever worn glasses in a Disney movie. She also has a beautifully embroidered skirt, and also a beautiful head of curls that is just so wild and fun. Mirabelle was wonderfully voiced by actress Stephanie Beatriz, and she does have quite a few songs in her movie. However, the main one is Waiting on a Miracle, which I think is just an absolutely beautifully heart-wrenching song about wanting to belong in her family. Although she also sings in the Familia Madrigal, We Don't Talk About Bruno, and What Else Can I Do? And what prevented her from being an official member of the Disney Princess brand? Well, nothing, to be completely honest. It is still very up in the air whether or not Mirabelle will become an official Disney princess. She currently has a permanent meet and greet location in the Magic Kingdom, and while not technically a princess by birth or marriage, she does come from a very established family who are often seen as the leaders of the town. So in all honesty, with her bravery of saving the miracle, I think her actions in her movie very much mirror Mulan, who is an official Disney princess, but isn't an official princess by birth or marriage, more so by heroism. So yeah, I think Mirabelle still has a little bit of hope of joining the princess brand, but if not, I don't think she needs it. I think she is just as wonderful of a character with or without the official title. And with that, we move on to number four on my list, who is Tinkerbell from Peter Pan. Now this feisty little fairy has certainly done a lot for the Disney brand. She can be seen lighting up the sky with fireworks every day at the Magic Kingdom. She often introduces every single Disney movie, and although appearing in her original animated movie, Peter Pan, she has an entire spin-off movie series with the fairies of Pixie Hollow. And as for the purpose in her movie, she is the sidekick to Peter Pan, and while she is absolutely lovable, she is quite a troublemaker, which again established her as very different from a lot of the other older female Disney characters. As for her character design, she is a beautiful fairy with a green dress, light blue wings, and yellow hair tied up in a bun. As for her voice actress in her her original animated movie, Tinkerbell is silent and only communicates through beautiful chimey bell tones. However, when Tinkerbell got her movie series a little bit later with the Disney fairies, she was voiced by Mae Whitman, who I think brings such a wonderful energy to the character. Tinkerbell does not sing in her original animated movie, and she actually used to be an official member of the Disney Princess lineup. However, because she really is a fairy and scale-wise she's a lot smaller than the other princesses, it was decided that she wasn't necessarily a fit for the princess brand, and so was brought over to the Disney Fairies brand and was made the leader of that, which I think suits her a lot better. And hey, even though she's not an official princess, I think it's really cool that she gets to light up the night sky every single night for the fireworks at the Magic Kingdom. And with that, we move on to number three on my list, who is Asha from Disney's Wish. Now, I know this movie didn't get a ton of love when it came out, but I absolutely fell in love with this character. Asha is strong, she is smart, she is zany, but also a fierce, fierce friend. She truly cares about the well-being of everybody in Rosas, and does absolutely everything she can to give them back their wishes. For the purpose in her movie, she serves as the protagonist of Wish, and directly goes up against the villain in the movie, King Magnifico. For her character design, she has an absolutely beautiful purple dress, and her hair is swept to the side in long braids. My god, it's just absolutely stunning. She was beautifully voice acted by actress Ariana DuBose, and she sings in quite a few songs in her movie, but her main song is This Wish. Her other songs include Welcome to Rosa, 
us at all costs, knowing what I know now. And she sings a little bit in I'm a Star. And what prevented her from being an official member of the Disney Princess lineup? Again, there really isn't a reason right now as to why she's not. It could be that her movie underperformed in the box office, although Wish just hit Disney Plus, so its performance on there is also going to have a big say. She also isn't really a princess either by birth or by marriage. So if she were to make it to the official lineup, it would be much like a Mirabelle situation where it would be based off of her heroism. But if it's just based off of that, I say she's absolutely deserving considering she saves her entire city. I absolutely love Asha and I cannot wait to see where the character goes next. And with that, we move on to number two on my list, who is Esmeralda from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Now, I think Esmeralda is an absolutely incredible character. She speaks out in the name of justice and she does everything she can to help her people. For her purpose in her movie, she is a fierce, fierce friend to Quasimodo. She is the love interest of Phoebus and she and her people are the main target of Judge Claude Frollo. Throughout her entire movie, she is strong, brave, and fearless and I think she deserves a lot more credit than what she's given. As for her character design, she has beautiful dark hair, a purple, white, and teal dress, and a cute little goat named Jolly to go along with her. <laughs> As for her voice, Esmeralda was voice acted by actress Demi Moore, and her singing voice was provided by Heidi Mollenhauer. The song that she sings in her movie is God Help the Outcasts. This song is an absolutely beautiful ballad about wishing for help for oppressed groups. That's what I love about Esmeralda so much is that she speaks up with a strong voice for those in need. And what prevented her from being an official member of the princess lineup? Well, once again, she used to be an official member of the princess lineup. When the brand was first established, she was a member alongside Jane and Tinkerbell. However, when Disney saw that her merchandise wasn't necessarily selling as well as the other princesses, her membership was revoked. And we really don't see a lot of Esmeralda anymore. I think the main reason for that is that the movie Hunchback is just very dark. But there is always hope and I would love to see her restored to the Disney princess brand and brought back to official meet and greets in the parks. And for number one on my list of favorite Disney heroines is Megara from Hercules. Now I love this character so much. She is sassy and spunky. She has an origin story like we've never heard before. And she ends up being a really wonderful partner for Hercules. For the purpose in her movie, she serves a very interesting purpose. She's of course the love interest to Hercules, but also she starts off as one of Hades' henchmen, considering she made a deal with him a long time ago in order to save her ex-boyfriend's life. But when her ex-boyfriend ended up cheating on her, she was left heartbroken and in debt to Hades. And so she does his bidding and attempts to find out Hercules' weakness. But in placing herself in his presence, she finds herself slowly falling in love with him. And I think that's what's so wonderful about Meg is that we've never seen a Disney heroine start off on the side of evil. She has a really great character arc where through the things that happen to her in her movie, her views change about the world. She starts off being absolutely done with romance and having no interest in it, and later ends up in a perfect relationship with Hercules. For her character design, she has a beautiful purple dress, which is of course inspired by Greek culture. And her hair is really this reddish brown and it's tied up in a high ponytail, which again, distinguishes her from every other Disney heroine. For the voice acting, Meg was one wonderfully voiced by actress Susan Egan. And fun fact about Susan Egan, she was actually the original Belle in Beauty and the Beast on Broadway. For the song, Megara of course sings a wonderful song called I Won't Say I'm In Love, which again helps with her character arc, as at the beginning she is not interested in love and then by the very end she sort of convinces herself that, well, maybe I'll give it a chance. I just won't say it out loud. And what prevents her from being an official member of the Disney princess lineup? I've got nothing. This character absolutely deserves to be an official member of the lineup. Considering her movie did relatively well at the box office, she is technically a princess by her relationship, considering Zeus is the king of the gods and Hercules, his son, would technically be the prince of the gods. So by being in her relationship, she's technically princess of the gods, I think that more than qualifies her. But more than anything, I think she just serves as a wonderfully funny character that could absolutely balance out a lot of the other princesses and add a brand new personality type to the lineup. And with that, we have reached the end of my list of favorite Disney heroines. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun talking about all of these incredible female characters. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel so that way you never miss magic from me. 
because at this point I'm posting every single week on Fridays at 5 p.m. You can also find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. And until next time, have a magical rest of your day, and I'll see y'all real soon.